All right, welcome back. Bastards, brigands, sirens, scoundrels, and of course, scruffy looking nerf herders. I am the Brigand Bob, and today we are gonna go ahead and go over the everyday carry pocket dump that I did just uh, the other day. I did a short little sub one minute video uh, that was a pocket dump for my everyday carry and what I carry around on me every day. And somebody popped into the comment section and said, hey, can you explain why you carry each item? And I think that that's a good idea. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do today. Um, now, obviously, some things need less explaining than others. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off with, you know, the things that need less explanation, and then we'll go ahead and take it from there. So the CZ uh, P10C, nine millimeter, is the gun that I carry on me every day right now. Uh, 15 rounds, plus one. I, I don't do the plus one, just 15 rounds in the mag. Empty right now. Uh, and I carry my spare mag on me, which carries uh, 20 rounds, an extended base plate from Shield Arms. So I like that. Uh, the extended base plate works well for me. Doesn't cause me any issues. Haven't had any feeding issues or reliability issues with it at the range. So I know that's good. And that's with ball ammo and uh, defensive ammo as well. It's important to shoot your defensive ammo uh, periodically and make sure that you're used to it because the defensive ammo typically will not shoot the same as ball ammo. So keep that in mind. Uh, now getting into everything else that will require a little bit more explanation. I think a firearm doesn't require that much explanation, but just about everything else does. So uh, this is a generic sock P dagger ripoff. Like why carry a generic ripoff? Well, because if I like wreck it trying to pry something open or I need to use it and it has to be confiscated or whatnot, like I don't want to carry something that's worth a ton. Uh, sock P daggers go for about a build 20 or something to that effect. So I have a handful of these. I have more than this one. Uh, it's sharp. It, it will do the trick. Um, I keep this on my strong side, my right side, right inside of my waistband, right here on my hip, a little bit to offset to the right. And I can simply loop my finger into the loop right here when I'm just resting my hand on my belt. Uh, so I can very kind of surreptitiously have my finger hooked into the loop without anybody noticing, and if I need to, I can just rapidly draw it uh, from concealment, much like, go ahead and do it right now. So it's very easy to kind of prep to draw it without drawing any attention to yourself and get it out into the fight really quickly if you need to, if you need, for whatever reason. Uh, it shouldn't always have to, different tools for different tasks and different jobs and different jobs require different tools. So simply having one tool doesn't mean that you shouldn't have another tool on you, so. The other knife I carry is this K-Bar uh, TDI fixed blade. Um, the way you hold it is in a fist, much like punching. I carry this on my weak side or my support side. So for me, that would be left side. I keep it right here, offset to the left, uh, right next to my spare mag holster, so. Also in the waistband, also very easy to draw. If my arms are pinned down, I can reach either either knife. I can reach the one on my strong side, and I can reach the one on my weak side. So that's available to me. And why do I carry one on my weak side? Well, in case my strong side isn't available, or I need to use the knife while I'm drawing a holster from concealment, or drawing my firearm from concealment. So that's why I keep that one on me. All right, uh, and those, you know, that kind of covers the tools for defensive tactics and and whatnot. Uh, everything else is going to be a little bit more nuanced. So I carry a butane lighter. Why do I do that? Do I smoke? I do not. Uh, I'm not a smoker. I uh, quit some time ago. So I carry a butane lighter on me for a few reasons. One. You never know when somebody else might need a light, so that's just good. But also, the wind isn't going to affect that flame as much, and if I need to start a fire for whatever reason, or I need I need flame in an open flame for whatever reason, this is going to help me accomplish whatever I need to accomplish without the wind really being as much of a factor uh, in getting that fire started or whatever it is that I'm doing. So a regular lighter is good, a 
butane lighter and flame is better. So that's why I carry a butane lighter on me. And this is just a little ranger band that I have around to help keep the lid closed. And also these ranger bands are just very handy. So, so I've got that there. Sharpie, the Sharpie is a Sharpie. Uh, you can do a lot of things with a Sharpie. I don't think it requires a ton of explanation. When I'm at the range, I use the Sharpie to mark holes that I've already made so I can see where my shots are when I go back and place more shots on the target. Uh, I can also use the Sharpie to uh, mark places when I'm measuring things out. Any number of tasks, uh, Sharpie can be very useful. Uh, somebody actually told me that Sharpies are great for signatures on original documents because they bleed through in such a way that other pens don't and can kind of help identify original documents. So that's actually cool too. And uh, another reason to carry it. So there's a lot of reasons to keep a Sharpie on you. It's just a very useful writing utensil to have. Uh, this other pocket knife here, somebody's like, you got a lot of knives on you. Well, yeah, I guess so. But only two of them are defensive. This one is more for just opening boxes and whatnot. Uh, it's not a defensive tool. It's not something I consider a defensive tool. If I have to use this in any kind of defensive way, things have gone pretty sideways and I'm in a lot of trouble. Uh, mostly, this is a multi-purpose uh, tool. So yes, I can open boxes with it. Uh, it's great for opening boxes. You can see all the gunk on here from me cutting tape and opening boxes. It's almost all I use it for. But it also has a seat belt cutter uh, built into it. So if you're in a wreck and your seat belt is stuck and you need to cut the seat belt off of you, you can just do that quickly uh, with this little seat belt cutter right here. Also, uh, we've got a window breaker uh, right here at the end. If your window's not rolling down, uh, you go into a body of water for some reason and you need to get that window out of the way so you can get out of the car, this is going to help you do that. If you need to bust a window open because you see a child locked in a car on a hot day or uh, you come across a wreck and you need to retrieve somebody from a car, very useful. And the seatbelt cutter is useful, again, for that same reason. So there's a lot of good reasons to have something like this. I've got like four or five of these um, so that if one just gets wrecked or lost, I can just pick the other one up. They're not expensive, they're like 10 bucks on Amazon. A, this, uh, having a pocket light, I think is important. Boop, boop. Uh, this is a Streamlight 6608 USB rechargeable light. I like it because it is USB rechargeable and I don't have to replace the batteries on it. I find that to be awfully convenient. It's very small, which I find to be convenient. And it has a, uh, a reverse clip on it, so I can attach it to uh, the bill of a hat if I'm wearing like a baseball cap or something, which we'll talk about at the end of this. Baseball caps are extremely useful. You should keep one in your car. But yeah, you can use that if you need to go hands-free with a light. If you're working on something and you need both of your hands, uh, it's very, very useful. Also, as a defensive tool, it can be useful if you need to pop light in somebody's eyes blind them really quickly for just, just to buy you that split second worth of time to do whatever it is you need to do to go to work. I think a multi-tool shouldn't require a ton of explanation. Uh, this is a cheap multi-tool. It's like 10 bucks. Uh, should you get a better one? Well, yeah, of course. If you get a better one, get a better one. Um, but I lose them a lot. So I have the cheap just $10 one and I do use it frequently. I don't think of a week goes by that I don't use it at least three or four times a week. So it is extremely useful. You know, would I rather have a Phillips screwdriver or a flathead screwdriver or any number of dedicated tools that are on here? Well, yeah, obviously those would be better, but this is convenient to carry around so you can have access to those individual tools anytime that you need them. Uh, not optimized, obviously, but convenient for everyday carry. Next we have the rat tail tourniquet. So a rat tail tourniquet fits in your pocket a lot easier than a regular tourniquet. Uh, regular tourniquets are not very practical to carry around on you uh, every day. I have a regular tourniquet in my car with a individual first aid kit that I keep in my car with along with a lot of other first aid supplies. But for on my person, a rat tail tourniquet is a lot easier to just carry around in my pocket every single day. Also, Rat tail tourniquets, uh, you can use them on people with smaller arms. 
like uh, very, very small individuals uh, with very small arms or children where a regular tourniquet just won't do the trick. And that's not just for treating uh, gunshot wounds, but anything that, you know, where, where you have bleeding going on that you want to stop. And that can be any kind of situation, whether it's you're the person that just happens to be there when something goes terribly wrong and you're the immediate first, you know, uh, response individual there and you can render whatever aid you can until a higher form of aid arrives and a higher form of care arrives to take care of that individual. Do what you can to stabilize them. Having a tourniquet on you, I think, is important. Uh, it's just as important as any of the other tools. If you are serious about saving lives, you would have you should have something like this on you. So, also important to have. And we've got the uh, the stainless steel uh, ballpoint pen here. So this is a ballpoint gel pen. It's a Zebra G four zero two G standing for gel. 0.5 millimeter. So on top of just being a great pen with a really great weight to it and writing phenomenal, phenomenally, it writes very well and it's just very smooth and good to use. Just my favorite pen to use. It's a stainless steel shaft and very, very sturdy. So good for a number of applications, particularly what I like it for. Um, the way it tapers down here at the end makes it perfect for takedown pens on an AR-15 if you've got really stubborn takedown pins, if it's a really tight lockup. So uh, I've got an AR-15 right here. I'll go ahead and I'll just, it's clear. So I can use this pin to just pop that takedown pin out. Now this isn't particularly rough, but you get the idea. You can use the pin to pop down particularly stubborn takedown pins. Boop, pop it open remove the charging handle, bolt, whatever work you need to do, you can do. So very, very sturdy, very useful, more than one application. I like it. And last but not least, we've got uh, the cell phone. This is a Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus, I want to say. And the cell phone, I think, is less important than... Uh, or less of a feature in what we're talking about here than the case that it comes in. This is a Juggernaut case, and it is for a Juggernaut uh, Molly system that fits onto a plate carrier. So it's got a whole Molly attachment system that fits onto a plate carrier, and this thing just pops right into it. And the flap that it pops into, you can move up and down. When it's up, you secure it in place with a bungee, and it stays nice and secure on your plate carrier. You're doing your thing. If you need access to your phone, you can just pop it down, look at maps, look at whatever it is you need to, do whatever it is you need to on your phone, boop, pop it back in place, secure it, go on about your business, whatever it is that you may be doing. So uh, that probably, some of you may be going, well, why do you even have a plate carrier in the first place? Why do you have armor, blah, blah, blah. That's fine, it's a valid question, I guess. So if you would like to see a video on that, a whole rundown on why I keep armor around and why I have body armor, then leave a comment below or completely thrash me uh, in the comment sections below. I don't care. So yeah, that's everything here that I keep on me on a daily basis. If you see me out and about on the street in Walmart uh, doing whatever, then this is going to be what's on my person uh, at that moment in time. The only time that you will not see me with some of these items on me is when I am legally required to remove them from my person before entering the premises. Typically, government-owned property, so courthouses, schools, post offices, things of that nature. If you do carry, you need to be well aware of where you are not legally allowed to carry so that you don't wind yourself up in a world of trouble. But anywhere I absolutely can legally carry, I do, 100% of the time. Now, some of these items may get rotated out for other items. I may add items in that you don't see here on this table right now. But as of March 2022, this is what my everyday carry loadout looks like. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. I hope you got something out of it. I hope this more detailed breakdown of all of the items I keep on my person and why I keep them on my person was helpful or edifying in some way. 
leave a comment in the comment section below if you have any questions. Uh, go ahead and let me know other types of videos that you would like to see. If you want to tell me to play hide and go fuck myself, you can go ahead and leave that in the comment section too. Doesn't matter to me one way or the other, but I hope that you guys got something out of this today. Be kind, be compassionate, be empathetic, and always be capable of great violence. Have a great day.